<laughs> What's going on, guys? Wow, that was really awkward earlier. I so I went off on a whole my phone's of course the timing and everything. Ah, I went off on a whole spiel anyway uh, earlier in the vlog. And uh, oh, by the way, hi, Yogizilla here. This is my Geek Test vlog. It's been a while. I got a lot of catching up to do today. I have a rant. But anyway, let me tell you, I, I went off on a spiel earlier and I had it just right. And then, then stuff happened. First, I'm on TeamSpeak. I have my away message on. Ob, one of the admins, the owner of the server, decides to pull me into things and talking. He never checks to see if I'm streaming or anything. He just pull me just talking. Into a trade of thought, and then it's just. Then after that, after the frustration subsided, I lost my internet connection. It's like, wow. So I was like, all right, well, let me just come back later. It's not meant to happen right now. So I guess you guys have been saved because what this means now is that it's going to be a rather shorter, short for me, a shorter vlog. What I want to talk about today is anti-social media. And some of the self-destructive behavior that we see in content creators uh, on Twitch, podcasting, blogging, whatever you're doing. Um, there's a few reasons I want to talk about this. One is a recent experience that triggered it, you know. Um, let's see, a recent slew of experiences where I just wonder where, where people heads, people's heads are at. And then, you know, I'm working on the Patreon for Geeky Antics. And it's got me thinking a lot more about where I want us to be and what I want to communicate. So we're going to talk about, you know, that kind of stuff too. Because uh, I think there's some lessons here for everyone. And the last thing is, it, it, it's funny to me. Like, I feel like as much as we've come a long way with technology and social media theoretically should connect us, there are greater rifts now between people than ever. Like, there's so much paranoia. And it just boggles my mind. Um, so I guess I, I can illustrate what I'm talking about by talking about a a friend I had in college. Let's call her Jessica. Um, she she was an interesting person. She's one of those girls that uh, had a lot of a lot of pet peeves, and I guess some men would call her opinionated. Basically, she was outspoken. And she did not have any filter. But then, that's not bad in itself, until you introduce the fact that she also had a lot of double standards. So, Jessica, would it always, I, every time I would talk to her, hang out with her, she always was involved in some kind of crazy love triangle, or some awkward situation, you know, where a guy likes her, and it's kind of being the creep. And I, and, you know, I started seeing the, 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 the this whole pattern right and then i realized you know what maybe it's not the guys they can't all be scumbags maybe it's you but i didn't realize i didn't realize it was too late but it was just funny because like i like to see the good in people that's the kind of person i am but she just you know she would she would go off on this thing like oh this this guy keeps you know he calls me like once a day to just, just to see how i'm doing that he you know, uh, he, he, he like, uh, you know, sends me flowers and, 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 and then sometimes he buys me lunch. He shows up at my job and buys me lunch. And then he, he doesn't go out, has to like to spend time with me. He just like, drops me to lunch, say, hey, just want to check up on you. And then leaves, but still it's kind of creepy. I feel like he doesn't respect my privacy. And then I'm like, well, I, that sounds kind of sweet to me. But then she talks about a dude that then she talks about a dude that she likes, and the guy the dude that she likes is doing the same things or worse, like calling her constantly just to keep tabs on her, but it's okay because that's someone that she likes. So it's like, wait, same behavior, if not worse, but because you like that person, it's okay. This is what happened in social media. Because the thing is, and this is what my discovery has been, people have their own perceptions. And their own biases, their own, ah, how can I say, their worldviews, right? And these worldviews shape how we perceive things, right? So, for example, if you're the girl that's had tons of boyfriends that's, that have cheated, or husbands that have cheated on her, 
chances are you're going to always assume that a guy's cheating on you because that's what your worldview shapes you to believe. And this is what happens social media. Um, you have a few creepers and people that spam or, well, you know, actually I have to say a majority of people on social media are selfish. They're just looking to siphon your audience, spam, self-promote, um, and be kind of like a shark, right? They're that guy at the party that's always making a sales pitch and making everybody feel awkward. It's like, I'm just trying to have a good time. You're ruining my fun. But, um, but the th the, um, the, and the unfortunate thing is then when people like me come along who just give a shout-out, just for the sake of giving a shout-out and maybe building up a, a, a relationship in the future that's mutually beneficial, like really mutually beneficial, you know, I just might shout people out. I might just say, hey, thank you so much. You know, showing gratitude. Like things, like it should never, we live in a world now where when you show gratitude, you know, you show authentic, like genuine gratitude or appreciation or just love for, for people, people get weirded out. It's like, whoa, whoa it's too much, man. I, 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 look, I just, I, I just met, I just barely know you. I, I, I went, I went, I've seen a couple of your shows. I've listened to a couple of your podcasts. Oh, I've seen some of your videos and I like them, but hey, hey, ah. Uh, you know, saying thank you is too much. And, and it's just weird. Like, as much as people have bought into social media, there's still, like, this, these insecurities that take us over where people want that anonymity. They don't want to be recognized or called out unless they authorize it. Like, things you, you felt you never had to ask permission for. Like, hey, I'm going to give you $100 just because I, I, I'm feeling generous. I'm giving a whole bunch of people $100. Oh, whoa. You should have asked me permission before you even asked me if you could give me $100. Like, what? You know? Uh, and, and it just boggles my mind. And so I'm going to rant here because I, I, I am one of those weird people that believes in helping others out, especially people that are getting started whatever they're doing. So I see a Twitch streamer. You know, I'll plug this, the channel, even though that kind of goes against what I'm doing. It helps us both out in the long run, you know. Uh, everybody needs help. No one does anything alone. Whoever thinks they do it alone, they succeed alone, is a fool. Because if you have no audience, you have no customers, you have nothing. So if you do scummy things and people find out, guess what? You got nothing. Uh, unless your audience uh, likes to be abused. And that, that is a thing sometimes. But it just cracks me up. Like, even big companies do this. Nintendo and Microsoft, they've, uh, they've uh, cracked down on how video, how YouTubers can produce videos and how they can name them and whatnot. Nintendo's getting even further and saying, oh, well, if you're going to use our products, you know, you have to be exclusive to us. You know, if you partner with us and we get a cut of your, your money. And it's like, it's just bottom line. It's like, wait. You, when, we were, when we were doing the free marketing for you, you were giving us shit and we were getting warnings from YouTube or Twitch about copyright material and blah, 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 even though it's free marketing for you, right? And that, you know, you could put, uh, anytime there's marketing done, especially for a big company, the, the price takes thousands of dollars. No one's going to do any kind of advertising for, for chump chain, especially for a big company. But then it goes, and, and instead of just appreciating that and supporting those people, they're like, no, we're just going to nickel and dime you and make it even harder for you to do what you got to do. So this is what happens with content creators at any size, uh, any kind of brand, any kind of business. Uh, in particular, I noticed with the Twitch streamers, it's such a weird culture. And I've talked about it with a lot of people that are partnered and, and small channels and medium sized channels, people at all, all levels. They're like, yeah, man, that's, you know, that, you know it's a no-no to like uh, shout people out or... Or, or, or follow someone, or, or, or go outside of Twitch. Like, if you beat someone on Twitch and you look them up on Twitter, ooh, well, you know what? Not for nothing. If I, if, if I feel we, we, we made a connection, the, my social butterfly in nature and my, mar my social media training, my marketing background says, take the next step. Social media is a public thing. Unless you lock your stuff down, or you change, or you use different names across social media, then if you're easy to find, I'm gonna take the opportunity. It's an easy step. Why not? Keep the conversation going. But it baffles me that people are like, hey, uh, this, I'm kind of weirded out at you. You friended me on Twitter. Uh, I mean, even though it's the same name as Twitch, and we had a nice conversation, 
uh, and, I, and, and I said, hey, well, uh, you know, I definitely look forward to hanging out with you again. I'm, I think you misunderstood. It doesn't mean I want to be your friend or anything. It's, it's, oh, gosh. How does that make sense? But that's the Twitch culture. It's, it's, you know, and I'm glad it's actually shif shifting away from that. And I love it. Um, the Geeky Ads Network, uh, we're collaborating with Spartan Show. We're collaborating with the Worst Radio Show as part of the United Broadcasting Network. We're, and we're, we're trying to share the best practices for social media. We're trying to create content and communities that are engaging, that are for people that want that connection and, and, and can put the paranoia aside, you know? Because often the things you're paranoid about are the things that you don't have to worry about. And then there's, there's threats you don't even... The, threats, the biggest threats are the ones that are unseen. 99% of the things we worry about never happen, you know? But people still are like funny, like so. It's just I just feel like if you're really that weirded out by people looking you up on social media, or I don't know, friending you or shot, shouting you out, then I mean, if you're that keen on your on your anonymity, don't use social media. I mean, that's the only thing I can say. People say I know I've, I've had this conversation with other people before, and they say, well. That's not fair. Like, just because my stuff is public domain doesn't mean that it should be used at someone's leisure. Well, there's certain, there's certain, there's certain rules in play, but connecting, making the, 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 those first, taking those first steps shouldn't be like an awkward thing. Like, hey, I just found you on Twitter. Can I, can I follow you? Is it okay if, if I follow you? Is that, is that all right? <laughs> What? That's helping you out. If you're doing if you're doing that stuff at all seriously, the more followers you have, the better it is for you. And that becomes a, a, a that has like a a snowball effect, you know. What's up to all the lurkers in there? Now, nah, that's another fan switch. When you call out lurkers by name, people are like they freak out. Like, well, oh, I was just trying to see what's going on. You don't, hey, they don't call me out by name. I mean, if I wanted to be noticed, I would message. Not necessarily. Some people need to be acknowledged. This is the kind of person I am. I'm engaging. You know, I might believe it. Or not, I'm an introvert, but I, I try to. I work really constantly, consistently on this to be engaging because I hate going to a channel. I hate going into a chat where it's a one-way communication. I want people to. I want to encourage people to interact and 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 get to know each other. And then you know, we don't have to be best friends, but if we, if I can make some best friends along the way, cool. If, can make some, if I can make some good friends along the way, cool. You know, if we're just buddies or acquaintances, that's cool too. That's different degrees, right? But you got to start somewhere. So I'm opening that door. And if you don't want to take it, that's cool. No one's forcing you. But if I, like, it's just so weird that that's what the internet has become. And just, it's seeped into the real world where people just kind of, like, want to keep to themselves. They put blinders on. It's like, oh, yeah, you're saying hello. Oh, you're saying good morning to me. Ah, uh, no. That, that, and so much salt in the world. It's just funny. It's, it, 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 I don't know. I don't get it. It baffles me. Um, but that's what Twitch has been for a while, and it's slowly but surely moving away. Because I'm I'm hearing from more and more, especially people that follow me on my channel on Twitch, Twitch.tv forward slash Yogizilla, or follow on a Geeky Antics channel. Um, they say, ah, you know, I'm tired of all these like streamers that are all about them, or these YouTubers that are all about them, and there's no there's no community component. Uh, other than buy my t-shirt and pay to wear an ad. Hey, buy my t-shirt, buy my hat, buy my wristbands, you know? Pay to advertise for me. What? It's crazy. So, you know, uh, one of the things that's really fascinating to me is in, in marketing. And even, all right, people, let's put the marketing aside. You may not care about marketing. But you might, you might have something. You might have some kind of creative project. You might have some kind of business, you know, maybe you do co web comics, maybe you're a graphic designer, um, maybe you're a Twitch streamer, a podcast, whatever it is, you have some kind, you might have something creative and you want, and most people that do creative stuff want it, want to share it with people. And it, it's hard to do that. Sometimes we forget to do it. Sometimes we feel dirty about it. It's like, when do I share my thing without seeming scummy about it? Right. And, and. The really, what we're doing to a degree is trying to create a community around our brand so that we can have people that could help us become more efficient in pollinating our, our content, 
you know, and, 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 and spreading that brand awareness. Now, community has that many different flavors. Two of the main flavors I would say is that you are, you're either going to have a tribe or a cult. Um, and even tribes come in different flavors too, you know, because in a tribe you have an established hierarchy, but the tribes trying to work together for the mutual benefit of each other. But as a chief, because if you have too many people in charge, it, it usually doesn't work because then people start fighting each other. So you need to have some kind of hierarchy, but tribes are pretty balanced and, and, and they're more tightly knit and they work well for certain things. Now the thing is they don't scale as well because the bigger you get, the, the harder it becomes to have one person or a group of people running the thing. But then there's cults. And that's what a lot of Twitch channels and YouTube channels are, and just a lot of the, like the the communities that the shape around content um, of any kind become. And a cult is is where you know, and there's probably gradients in between, right? And there's other things too. But I'm just saying these two just to illustrate. A cult is where the fans become almost obsessive with uh, their and 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 the thing about it is. That people become obsessive about the personalities or the the story. Oh, wow, that, these people blew. I remember one day when they were just, uh, th their channel only had like 10 people on it in the, on average. Now they have tens of, tens of thousands of people in there. So they become, the, the, the story excites them. Or they, or they feel like, oh, they have a badge of honor. Like I was one of the first people that supported this channel. You know, there's different ways, different ways that people become obsessive or a super fan about, you know, a community. And, and, but then there's also the people that are there just because they're like, well, if I spend enough time here, maybe I could get some of the juice that they have. So I, I can cipher some of their community, or I can bring some attention to what I'm doing. And then we see that a lot. But it's still, you know, it's still, I, I call it a cult because it's still like this really, these really obsessive behaviors that perhaps are unhealthy. Um, and of course, in a cult, you have, you have to have people that, um, I gotta say, that's, that, that's subscribed to a common framework or belief system, um, or, or they take a common, a common call to action or calls to action. I know I'm rambling on, but it's just really, it's really fascinating to me all the things that are at work and people don't even try to think about it. Like think about the Twitch channels you like or the YouTube channels you like, what draws you to them to begin with and then what keeps you coming back. There's almost always some community component. Now, <clears throat> the content itself, and I would say community becomes part of the content or the overall experience, but let's just say that the, the core of the content is the, the actual thing, right? So let's say if we, we take a, we detract community from it, right? And we say, what's this content? All right. Why do I li like it? All right. What's the value? How do you determine the value of content that you like or value or the value of content that you're putting out? So there's a few ways to do this, but one of the ways is, does this solve a pain point, right? And that's when there's a real need that's so strong that it's really causing pain to people. And when that need is so strong and there's nothing to fulfill that need, the opportunity is the ripest, right? Um, I, for example, there was, I was having some audio sync issues and there was nothing on YouTube. You know, I was having some, actually not just audio sync, I had all kinds of audio issues using OBS and I figured them out on my own because everything, everything on YouTube and everything in blogs, everything I Googled, everything I found on YouTube, you know, all throughout the interwebs was completely misleading and unhelpful. And, and that's an opportunity I should probably take advantage of and say, hey, this is what I found works. And I find it ironic, by the way, that the people that do these YouTube videos and say how to fix audio issues on OBS, they have like really low audio where it's not like they're whispering to you. And it's not just people, then people, then they comp, I like when people comment on that, say, oh, your audio is really low. And they say, oh, you just have bad speakers. Well, well, actually, I have headphones on. If I can't hear you well on headphones, where it's going, the audio is going straight into my ear holes. No, that's on your side, buddy. <laughs> ah, the passing of the buck is real.
Man, anyway, before I go on, I sidetrack. Is it, so, so does it solve? Does it does it address? This, uh, does your content address a real pain point? Is it so? Is that's the that's the like the most natural way of defining value. But the value could also be entertaining. You know, maybe you're doing something so unique. You know, uh, maybe something something niche, something fresh that people have have always maybe they have always wanted to see or never thought of, and they're like, wow, why, why hasn't this been a thing before? Um, but it, overall, it, it, you know, one of the things I've noticed, and let's bring it back to why social media has become so antisocial and why so many Twitch streamers are rather self-destructive in the way they approach it, right? First of all, like, Twitch is one of the few platforms I can think of where people focus almost exclusively on Twitch. There's some people that have Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, but... They're not trying, they, like, to them, that relationship is one way. It's like feeding from there to Twitch. Where really, in some cases, you want it to be two ways. Because you want to be able to take your audience to other places where you can engage them when you're not streaming. That's very important. You don't want Twitch to own, you want, do you, that's like giving Twitch your wallet. Here, here's my money. And if you guys, you know, decide to shut down my channel, you can keep my audience and, you know, I have nothing now. So you got you got to have some lead caps. You have to some some engagement, some lead nurturing platform, your own ecosystem outside of Twitch. But this I, I barely see this. You know we have geekyanswers.net. We're trying to make it so that people ha that, that can't afford to create their own website have forums, have their own system to use, their own platform um, tools and 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 how to guides and all that kind of stuff. We're doing that. Um, but I do have a point. I promise. But even, you know, so people, they stay on Twitch, they stay within that, they don't, they barely see the, the, the value in collaborating, even if it's just dual streaming, maybe not being part of a, a team page or a, a, a stream team, they barely see the value in that. Maybe they tried it once, and they, they got burned, so now they think that that's not worth my time. And that's a shame, because all it takes is one bad apple to ruin for everyone else. But here's the thing. Like, uh, and, and this goes back to what I'm doing with Patreon, trying to really get to that, that meat and potato of what makes um, what we're doing so unique. And I really feel that what we're doing is really unique. Um, there's certain core values I want to communicate. Like, one of the things I want to ultimately have with our, when we actually can afford a staff, or we can at least say, hey, this is our core team. These are the people that are really, like, contributing to Geeky Antics in meaningful ways, in multiple ways, consistently, right? When we're in that position, I want, I want to say, all these people share the same core values. They, they believe, right, they have the same core values and principles. They, they, they've aligned themselves to our, our mission. They, they get the vision, you know, they're in it for the long run, and they're in it for, for the team. Now, let's be honest. Everyone ultimately is selfish. To some degree, you know, people give to charity. And it's a way to feel better about yourself. Um, some people use it for the tax write-off. Some people use it to offset all the, the, the evil that they've done, you know, and the scummy things they may have done in other parts of their life. You know, um, it's, it's a way of almost, I guess, vindicating yourself. Um, and I'm not saying it's not a good, a good thing to do that, but there's, some t there's people that do it more because they really want to help others and give back to the community and people that do it more for the self the, the the benefits to them right um people that support your twitch channel right like uh, I, this is a hot topic for every for twitch streamers are raids good you think about it on one side oh okay they're bringing a bunch of viewers to my channel i might get some followers out of it but a lot of the times they're raiding and they're spamming uh, the person's channel or, you know, and to a point where it's like, are they just trying to siphon what little audience I have, you know? So it's like this delicate balance, balancing act, you know, and, and it's hard to read people's intentions. But the thing is when, in, to get teams to work, to work, to get communities to work, you know, the difference between an organization like a corporation or um, a comedy group uh, a, a podcasting network, whatever kind of business entity you might have, and then the, the overall community, there's a lot of differences. 
I said, I'm not going to get into them. But there's one thing that unifies them. Or unifies the people that really are there consistently and stick and, and have developed loyalty. And that's reaching that aha moment. And that's the biggest challenge. How can you get people to that moment where they're like, aha? Or like, oh. No one's really said aha, right? Or they go, oh, that's what you're doing? You know? Like, I could tell you, I have tons of followers on Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. And I haven't done a great job honing in on an elevated pitch and consistent messaging so that I finally drilled in so much that people finally, it finally clicks. And that's a challenge. You got to keep doing it, refining your message, making it more concise. You know, what's your value proposition? What's the thing? If you have 30 seconds to tell someone in an elevator what you, what you do, they go, oh, so what do you do anyway? I notice you, you work from home or I notice that, you know, usually do, I, I see you a lot on this, you know, uh, on this website or whatever. What, what do you do anyway? You have 30 seconds, make it good. It's something that's, that's something you constantly work on, and that's part of the fun, right? Whether you have a Twitch channel, whether you have a website, a network, whatever you're doing, I, the, the, you, you, that's, norm, that's normally something that you might have in your head, and you understand, I know, what, I, I know the essence of what I'm doing, I know, I know what I want to communicate, but how can I hone into the very core of it? The one thing that's non-negotiable, or the collection of things that are non-negotiable, and that really make us unique, our, our unfair advantage and, and the thing that will get people excited. So I thought, I've been thinking about this, you know, and we have tons of people that support Geeky Antics Network. Tons of people supporting me, they're like, man, Yogi, you need to be partnered. You know what, I, uh, you know, a few years ago, I didn't even like, want to really do the video thing because I, I have a face for radio. So I stuck to podcasting and blogging and I did some ghost writing and, you know, I stuck to a lot of behind the scenes type stuff like, um, game development and whatnot, um, and, and I'm still kind of an introvert, but I appreciate the people that push me and say, man, you have such a great personality, I love hanging out with you, and when we talk on, 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 on Skype or TeamSpeak or Ventrilo or Roger Wilk or whatever the thing was at the time, you know, or on the phone, you know, I, I feel like, I always feel like you're there, you're just so engaging, you need to do video, it's, it's, you know, you got that energy, so I finally just said, hey, I'm, I'm going to do video consistently, and I never looked back, you know, I still have an ugly mug, but... I feel like, you know, you can see my hands moving. There's something magical that happens. There's some things you can't do in a certain um, different mediums, you know. So that, a multimedia approach is great. You know, I was just going to put that out there. So anyway, uh, I did have a point, and I went off on another thing. But, you know, so, oh, gosh. There's so much I want to say. There's so much I've been thinking about. And I've been thinking about all this stuff throughout the day. Um, I, even, I even wrote some stuff down. I have sticky notes, and I have notes in front of me. Um, there's a, there's a big point I want to kind of end this on because we're already approaching a uh, half hour. Um, <coughs> but all right, so let's let's backpedal a little bit. So, getting people to, this is a challenge. Getting people to that point where there's a shared vision, your goals are aligned. There's no conflict of interest. Finding those people to begin with is hard enough, but then making it so abundantly clear, like, this is why this is exciting. Like, I know in my head, I know why, why what we're doing is huge. I'm, and, and I celebrate all, and, 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 I, and I, not just celebrate, but I also share the, the big wins. Any kind of victories we have, I share it with the team or the people that at least I think will, will care. And, and it, 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 it's amazing to me, like, when I tell people, Dude, I just did a bunch of Google searches, and we're at the very top of Google searches for a bunch of things, including how to succeed on Twitch. And they're like, oh, that's cool. I'm like, do you understand? Let me, let me paint this to you. And, then, so, and this is the thing. It's all framing, right? People may not care about SEO. They may not care about online marketing. But when you tell them there are companies that will pay a, an, an, um, a marketing firm, you know, Three thousand to ten thousand dollars a month or more to do their search marketing and to produce content for them and blah blah blah. I know because I've I've done that, and we and I've had teams that I've worked with. So that's a thing. So for us to be able to do that organically, we're still kind of in this weird, awkward, soft launch phase, and you know it's really just me doing almost one hundred percent of the work. Now Andy Spafizilla, he works really hard to do the back service side things, but he's got his own projects going on. So Geeky Answers right now, like the core of it is me. There's people that contribute, but I, you know, honestly right now, I'm the only one that's 100% fully vested. And part of that's my fault. So, but 
the beauty of that, rather than looking at that as a bad thing, it's like, man, there's so much room. Like, we're doing this right now with people kind of just dipping their feet in the, in, the, in the water. Imagine if people finally, like, had that revelation, like, dude, what we're doing is huge, right? So now I'm going back to the, the, the whole idea of doing crowdfunding and creating, like, a really fun page and creating urgency, not just for our supporters, but for myself. I need to get back into cartooning, and I need to get into more consistent content uh, development schedule. You know, sw- Twitch streaming, blogging, you know, podcasting. Uh, podcasting, I've, I've been consistent with. Um, all the stuff that I love to do. And then do, deliver that content and, 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 and really keep the momentum going and keep building upon it. Because when you stop doing that stuff, it hurts you. Like, it's hard to keep the momentum going at first. But then once you do and you're consistent with it for a while, it snowballs. But it's that initial, that the, the, the beginning, the start is always the hardest. That's why sometimes all, the best thing to do is just get started. Whatever your thing is, you want to do arts and crafts shop on Etsy, hey, cool. But get started. Start shipping as soon as you can. So you, don't get stuck on the detail. That's what we're doing now. But now, now I'm getting back and I'm like, wow, we've really evolved. We're really refining our messaging, I, what, you know, really refining what it means to to be part of the gang, what it means when, when we talk about building the Geeky Ants. No, I'm, I'm, I'm writing down notes as, as I'm doing this vlog. Um, you know, and, and so, so uh, the Patreon, you know, one of the, there's a few things that I think really, I hope, resound with our, with our current supporters and our future supporters. And I think what we're going to find the most success with is bringing this home. One, there's a certain degree of elitism Let's just say with Twitch. Let's just say with Twitch and podcasting, right? You want to, let's say you really love certain podcasts or Twitch channels. And then you say, hey, I'd like to get into it, but, you know, I don't really have the money to invest. Like, how can I get started cheap? And the, the device is so terrible. And it's, it's usually stuff like, well, you need, at least need uh, this kind of computer and a mixing board. And you need uh, at least a $200 mic. And... And if you don't have a green screen and a soundproof room, you really shouldn't bother doing it at all because that, you, that you're not going to get good results. And I'm like, fuck that. And there's a certain level of elitism in so many communities, whether they focus on podcasts, whether they focus on VODs, whether they focus on live events, you know, whatever their, 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 their niche or their, their shtick might be. There's so much elitism, and I'm, I, I'm sick and tired of it. So now I finally said, dude, that is the pain point that I'm solving. But how can I drive that home? Because that's something that bothers me. I'm tired of that. Like, especially in PC gaming, it's like, why can't they just be like, get the, the salt out of the way? Like, you know, it's all right to rant and, just be, and give each other a hard time, but we, there's not enough unity, not enough collaboration, you know? It's like there's these... What I'm seeing, we're seeing that now. If you look at all the media outlets and the, the few communities for geeks and game and gamers online, that all the small ones are being consumed by the bigger comp, bigger company, and they're losing their warmth, you know. And and I don't know. There's so many things bothering me about that. But not just the, the, the elitism of it. It's and I had and I had and I had I had the way the perfect way to just drive to drive it home just now, and it's and, and it's escaping me. Not just the elitism, it's, it's just something else in there that, that's really, I, I, I think it's, it, there's something magical when you see a story where, and you see it evolve, right? Like, I want people, like, two to five years from now, you know, like that, that's why I really see our, our roadmap. Like, a year from now, two years from now, and five years from now, I see we're going to be in very di- different places. I really believe that. And I have a roadmap for that. But I want people to see, like, we're everyday guys, right? You barely see representation of geeks and gamers that have responsibilities. You know, the... I mean, I, I want to be real. Like, I want to be completely real. Hey, I'm the dude that used to be uh, an alcoholic, and I turned my life right. I used to smoke crack. Uh... Oh, hey, I, I'm the guy that, that not too long ago had a noose around my neck, you know? And I'll be honest, man, I, like, I'm just using those examples, but I've, I 
gone through all kinds of bouts with depression. Uh, the past few years, I've had so many, so much loss, and and it, it's actually helped me. It's been a therapy as much to me as the community to be to have those people identify those people within the geeky access community that I can ha just talk to them on, on a real level, more so than I can with people that that I have if in my household or that that I have that I can meet face to face. And it's, there's there's magic in that having that kind of support system. A personal and business thing. That's that's what I want Geeky Ads to be, you know. But just having everyday people, you know, there's barely any representation of of like the everyday person who's struggling, who's in the trenches, and and is doing and you, and, and is doing great big things. And we're doing that. We're we're doing it more and more. We're going beyond ourselves, you know. Yeah, I've raised some money to help support my family, but I've also given back a lot to the community. I've, and I've I've helped so much, so many people like. I'm almost 50 50 with how much time I spend supporting others and helping others out, even though I have very little to give to myself and my own family. You know, that's, and that's my real story, right? But I know, I noticed on Twitch, you barely see the people that are like, you know, you barely see the parents that are gamers that really love gaming and want to be able to, to connect to people and, and bring their own kind of style of entertainment or their own kind of experience, you know, and there's a struggle with that. It's hard for me to stay consistent with the with the content schedule, but I'm finding ways to work around it. And those challenges, I want to be able to share those challenges. And everybody has their own story. Someone might be disabled, and they have to overcome those those challenges. You know, I, and I could almost relate to that. Like I'm not completely disabled, but I have a messed up back. The two discs that are herniated, two discs that are uh, disintegrated completely. And and I, sometimes I have very little mobility. Like if I just try to turn like this, I'm like, ooh, that hurts. It's gotten better through therapy and exercise, but you know, but everybody has a struggle. Everybody has a story, and I want to get those unique stories, and then collectively be able to have people say, "Man, geeky antics—they kept it simple. They didn't get stuck on all these little details of getting all the details perfect. They just kept on the grind. They didn't do quantity for the sake of quantity, but they kept trying different things, experimenting until they found the things that they were really best at and focused on those things. That's what we're doing. We're constantly experimenting." You know, we're trying to see, try out with different uh, times to, to, to stream, different times to put out content. You know, so many things that we're measuring and, and, and getting a feel for. And, and it's, and it's a, a constant work in progress. This is a living, breathing thing. Beauty hat, what's going on, brother? So, I'm, I'm totally on a rant right now. I'm, I'm hopefully, I'm not boring you guys. I'm, I'm just giving some real talk here with you guys. Give me some behind the scenes on how my business and creative mind works. And, and the vision of what's coming out. Yeah, exactly. That's how... It, but you don't hear that. Like, and that bothers me so much. Like, you read... I, I do a lot of reading. I watch a lot of videos. I go... I've got to workshops. And you always hear about this guy. It's like, I used to, you know... It's almost like you say, like, I used to be a crackhead. And I had t tattoos all over my body. And, and I was a whore. And blah, blah, blah. But then I... I, I, I found so-and-so thing, and I committed to that, and I turned that around. I used to smoke. I don't do that anymore either, you know. But you don't hear about the actual struggle. You don't get to see the actual struggle, really. It's like, a, and so everybody's condition, conditioned to think, oh, it's an overnight success. They just, you know, they had good timing. They were there when the opportunity is ripe, or, you know, they needed the right people, and it just magically everything happened. No. The struggle, we need to like focus on the struggle, focus on the very real challenges. There's just not enough transparency and authenticity in the world. So, I, like I, when, I, when, I, when I talk about geeky antics, I say I want I want people to appreciate fighting this elitism in the, in the geek community, uh, you know, geek culture overall. Um, having people embrace grassroots and, and simplicity, you know, high production value. Hey, bad props. You got a nice overlay. You got you know, professionally edited videos, and you spent, you know, thousands of dollars to get a, a nice introduction uh, loop done and some bumpers, cool, more power to you. But if we could do stu stuff that's exciting and, and, and can inspire others and say, hey, anybody could do it. All, the only thing you need, there's two things you really need. Forget about the equipment, forget about having the right niche, playing the right game, having the right topics. That stuff, you'll figure it out as you go along. Believe me. But you need a support network. Everybody, look, no one does it alone. 
tell me, tell me, you know what? If you could tell me of a business where you could make money, you know, support yourself and, and not have to involve anyone else, I want to know about that. That, that. that sounds amazing. Does the money just rain down? Like, just you sit down and money, you know? Like, but this is the thing. People like say, that's, that's ridiculous. Yogi, now you just being a troll. There's no such thing. But that's the mentality. Like, people, I like, oh, this, you know, I, I don't need people. I'll just do it on my own. And this is the way Twitch streamers act. Like, I, I don't have time to support your channel because I'm doing my own thing, you know? Uh, but so you need a support network. That's the one. And the other thing you need is you need to have the right attitude, the right mindset. Because I'm telling you, there's gonna be people that are, that are dream stealers. They're gonna try to knock the wind out of your sails. They're gonna be salty. They're gonna try to get you to focus on all the bad things. And if you let them take you down, guess what? You're gonna you're gonna miss. You're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna do like a lot of people do. You're gonna you're gonna miss a moment. Or you're going to give up, even worse, you're going to give up just as you're about to hit a breakthrough moment, like a big breakthrough. And it happens so often. We have some stuff here in the chat. Uh, Beard and Hat says, lazy does not ever become good. You never hear about the years of hard work to become an overnight success. Yep. Look at the first wave of YouTube success. Phil, Phil DeFranco sucked for the first three years, but as, time, but as time goes on, he got better. It was work. Yeah. You never hear about that. So what I want to do is capture that and make sure that, like, we can make that as consistent a part of a message. Like, say, even when we're huge, you know, whatever our huge looks like, you know, I, don't, I, I personally don't care about fame and fortune. I just want to be able to get to the point where I can say, you know, the bills are taken care of. I can help someone else out. I can help other people out that are in worse situation than I am. I have to worry about the bills and just focus on my life's work, do the things, you know? And that's not, you don't need tons of money to be in that position. You just need to be smart about how you spend your money. And I, you know, our family, I, I'm working really hard to streamline our, our, our costs. Like, we barely eat out. And we used to, like, my wife and I, we used to get, like, two cups of Starbucks a day. And when you stop and look at that, you know, you're talking about $24, you know, $20, $24 in, in a day times five at least. Hundred dollars a week, it, that adds up, you know. Passion goes a long way, you know. And I hate when people say, "Oh, passion is not enough." No, it, it is, because let me tell you, that's the number one thing. Like, once you lose your passion, you know, if you're just doing something, if you're just jumping on a trend because you think it's, it's the opportunity is ripe, you're just doing it because everybody else is doing it. You're gonna, you're gonna be sad. I did that with IT. I did IT for a long time, and I love computer, I love technology, but I didn't love the work because people, quite frankly, are assholes, you know. And, uh, and IT worked, but he was really good. I I still get offers today, but just constantly worried if my job's gonna be sent overseas. You know, busting my ass, having no personal life whatsoever, working, you know, forty eight hour days just to bring my sal have my my salary, make protect my salary because I didn't know hourly pay. You know, a lot of BS. So being has this passion goes a long way. If you love it and devote enough time to it. You won't suck forever. You know, and, and, and the thing, too, like my, for me, like, I want to appeal to, uh, like, ultimately, when you create content, the best way to approach it for me is to look for people that are like-minded. Those are the first people you want to collaborate with, people that understand exactly where you're coming from. So me, I don't get excited about people that have high production value. I like the guy that has grassroots, you know, min simplified stuff, maybe minimalist stuff, but then it's real it's unique and it's completely theirs. Like you can tell they, 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 they love it. Like just because you don't put all this polish and extra bells and whistles into something doesn't mean it, is, it, was, it isn't thoughtful, right? And, and you can tell the love that people put into things. So for me, if I read a book, I could tell right off the bat if it's just something that was kind of just forced uh, based around some research and it's like mm, we, we did some studies this is what people are looking for so we'll just put a bunch of testimonials have some people some famous people validate what we're saying and then just write a bunch of crap in there and then it'll sell like hot cakes or you put your heart into it like and, and share a very real story i'm a big fan of authenticity that's the way i do it you know and it's and it's tricky for me because i because i tr try to be 100 percent transparent and since I'm, I'm an overshare, and sometimes I act and I, I behave in a manner that makes people uncomfortable. Like, well, I'm not, I'm not like you. I like my anonymity. And that's probably most of the internet. Let's see what else we have here. 
get past the death, but it gives you the drive for everything else associated. You know, and it's tough, you know. I, 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 I fell into a rut, you know, not, not too long ago. And I'm still trying to try to get, get back to that place where I was, where I was 100% motivated. Like, hey, tell me, think about all the stuff I want to do, Geeky Answers. I'm like, I just want to fast forward because I was going to fast forward to the point where the money situation is no longer a problem. And I can focus on just the work itself. Like, hey, boom, that's no longer an issue. I can focus 100% on this and not have to worry about, oh, I need to take out, pick up some other extra work so I can do this stuff. It's a bad place to be. But, so keep that momentum going, keep that passion, that, that energy level up is hard. So that's, part of, that's another reason that, that we're building the network. We want to create a support framework so that you have accountability partners, people that will actually tell you positive things. Not yes you to death, but there's enough people that will rain down on your, on your parade and, you know, pee in your cheerio, so to speak. So it's good. It's so hard to find people that will just say, dude, you know what? You had some hiccups, you had these problems, but I really enjoyed your show. I really enjoyed that video you did. Or, man, that, that speech you gave, that presentation you put on was amazing. You know, I want to create a place where people can have that and really set up these deeper connections, these, the, the, where the possibilities are endless. I know that sounds like such a grandiose kind of thing, but, uh, you know, and I, again, I st I'm still working on refining that messaging. Like, what is the thing that makes us so unique? What will we focus on? Eventually, we have to, like, focus on certain things. There's going to be certain things you have to lead in with, right? But I think that's an important message. Like, I can't think of a place where I go and I say, man, these are, this is a really grassroots operation. Um, you know, they, they, they are not about the elitism. They, 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 they give a message of hope to people that, that would like to do something similar. you are like, hey, if you could do it, I guess I could do it, too. Uh, Geek and Sudry comes close, but they're really high at the production value. But, you know, we've seen them grow over the years, right? Remember what Felicia Day and Will Whedon's work used to be like? They've come a long way, so, you know, that's an inspiring story. And you saw the progression, and you saw a little bit of the struggle. But they also had some luck in there. But um, someone introduced me to, um, reintroduced me, actually, to Loading Ready Run. And I know them from the, I know them for the podcasting space, but they're doing Twitch streaming and all this other stuff now. And it's like, wow, you know. They, they, they've they come a long way, and they still have kind of like this really grassroots, where just everyday people kind of feel. And those are the stories that excite me. And if we could create more of those stories and make those stories more pervasive, then I feel that that's when I will feel like we've become a huge success. It's not a dollar amount. You know, it's when we get to that point where we can say, man... I remember when this person was about to quit, and we just said we we sat down, and I, I said oh, I drove up, you know, ten hours to visit them, and then we hung out and just just chilled and talked and did a lot of brainstorming, and we we back back on the grind, and now they're one of the biggest names in X Y Z, you know, like that's the, I, like I want to be able to create that kind of place, um, and and you know when I was trying to come up with the name Geeky Antics. You know, part of it was, oh, I want a cool acronym, you know, Geeky Antics Network Global. Ooh, the gang, join the gang, it's clever. But no, this, this is really something really important. Like, to me, being geeky is about being passionate. And sometimes passionate about things that people may not understand. Um, and then the antics is just reminding people we're serious about what we do, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. And above all, we want people to have fun and be creative. You know, and if anything takes you away from that, shift your focus. So me, I, you know, like I, I look right now at my, at my video preview. I'm like, man, you know, if I just make a nice little overlay, make it jive, like a brand it, make it all look good and unified. And I can give that overlay to other people that, that stream on Geeky Antics channel. You know, I, then we could have this consistent kind of look and feel to all our stuff. You know, and I, and I could do animation, I could do something 3D rendered, oh yeah, I could do this. You know, imagine, it, it, a lot, and as people do this all the time, you get stuck on those little details, you'll never get anything done. That stuff will come with time, believe me. But, let's get back to the original message. You know, the anti-social media. And I'm going to write an article on this, because uh, there's a lot, there's more, ref, there's more uh, concise messages I want to share with you guys. And hopefully that, that this will be something that everybody can relate to. But, you know, stop fearing being vulnerable. I think that's the problem. I've been there before. There was a little stretch in my time. I was like, I'm just going to be a loner. Keep to myself. 
I ignored my family for the most part because they were pissing me off. They were being real assholes. I said, fuck it. I'm just going to seclude myself from everyone, just work, come home, and just keep to myself, play video games, and not really associate with anyone. You know, and, I, and I did that. And, and, and I've done that several, throughout my life, you know, be, just going to hermit mode, be a loner. But, you know, it's the worst thing you do because it, trying to dig yourself back out of that hole is bad. Is that the damage you make is permanent, not, not just to people you, that, that love you, but to yourself. But I see this happening all the time with social media, and, and, I, and I'm, just, I'm still so baffled and really concerned by the people on Twitch that are kind of like, they have this mentality that's like, well, I'm going to do it by myself, because if I associate with anyone, what they do reflects on me, you know? And like the story I shared in the very beginning... It's kind of like when people say, no, I'm not interested in doing that kind of thing. Sadly, what they're saying sometimes is, well, I'm not interested in doing that kind of thing with you. And it, it, it's, it changes the whole thing. You know, the, the guy that's creepy is just a few steps, you know, away from being the guy that's su really sweet and, and, and sexy, you know. And it's all because of the perception, you know, or, or timing, but people just overestimate the the amount of risk that there really is in social media or you know the amount of effort involved in nurturing relationships or just taking a dive and, and working on things together so i don't know i i would love to say i have one big point to to tie this all to all up together right now but if there's anything you know i i, I guess i would say as a big takeaway is Look around you, and I, I can almost guarantee there's a few people that you, know, you may have missed that have consistently been there or reached out to you and, and, and really care about your success, your happiness. Now, it's funny. From a, uh, a global perspective, Americans, we, we tend to focus more on happiness, whereas the rest of the world tends to focus more on meaning, having a meaningful life. The way I look at it is, I, I, the way I look at it, it they're not mutually exclusive, because the greatest joy you can have is by having meaning in your life, and meaning to me is simply knowing that you're touching lives, you're making a difference in lives. It doesn't matter how many lives, but if you're making a big difference in lives, you do you you matter. You're important, and. If you feel like you're really fulfilled, like this, you know, you have that purpose. That's that's a, a, that's something to celebrate. And again, it still starts with forming those connections. Now, I don't, I'm not saying that everyone you meet is your friend, and you should have tons of friends. True friends are very few. There's there's very few of them out there. But when you do find people that consistently try to reach out to you, hey, give them a chance. You know. If they fail, then they fail. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But don't preemptively count people out. I mean, I got the nastiest tweet from someone who I, I, I shouted out and I, I, I sent people to their Twitch channel. I'm giving them free advertising. And they sent me like a message like, you know, this is kind of creepy. You know, you just kind of took the liberty of, of uh, you know, finding me on Twitter. And I'm like, well, it was easy. I was already shouting out other people, and then I remember you, you made an impression on me. I thought we made a connection as, as, you know, as good buddies or something, you know, and I wanted to take the next step to get to know each other. People just, like, they worry so much about the most asinine of things. Like, I got a diatribe of, like, ten messages sent to me DM, and then I couldn't even respond back because the person didn't follow me back. So at Twitter, I love that. You follow someone... They can send you a diatribe and spam you and, and basically shit on you, and then you can't message them back. And it's such a cowardly thing to do. Yeah, people, dude, yeah. Let me tell you, that's what, I say, that's what I'm saying. Like, I understand being selective with who you really t put into your inner circle and your mastermind group. That's a different thing. There's, there's, there's degrees. There's levels. You level up your, 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 your friends, you know, and really there's acquaintances, pals, buddies, you know, friends, best friends, you know, whatever, whatever your hierarchy is, but everybody has it, they just don't realize it, but there's people, yeah, they're, they're like aversive 
to making friends or just getting support. It's like they're afraid, like, if you if they acknowledge that as a good thing that they're going to owe you, like, I don't want to owe anybody. It, it's it, it's a sad word. And, I, and, and when I see all these things going on in communities that I love and things that I love, you know, Twitch, podcasting, I'm like, oh, man, so much selfishness, so much paranoia. I really want to just create a place where, like, people could say, man, there's some really cool people here. And we're always going to have our assholes. Like, Obi tends to piss off, piss off a lot of people. And, you know, I love Obi to death. Unfortunately, he doesn't 100% exemplify what we're about. He's still kind of stuck in the mainstream thought. You know, he doesn't truly get what we're trying to do. You know, he doesn't, like, he doesn't have the compassion and the grassroots ap- approach to him is like bigger, better, bigger, better, faster. That's the best way to go. You know, me, I'm like, come as you are. You know, if you have passion, if you have, if you have ideas, you know, you're creative. If you care about people, that's more important than any about his skills or hardware or experience you may have, you know. Because that other stuff, the, the tech, the tactics, the operational stuff, that can be developed. But an asshole is always going to be an asshole. You know, whether you're a, a elitist stop or you're just a douchebag or you're that underhanded guy that pretends to help to care about other people just so you could, you know, ride their coattails and steal their ideas and steal their audience, post their audience, you know, stuff like that happens. I know a bunch of people that stole stolen ideas. Like, you know, with Geeky Antics, we were the first people to do gaming talk shows and podcasts on Twitch. And all of a sudden, like, I see people, like, doing similar things to us. And I'm like, that seems very, very familiar. But whatever. You know, I don't get salty about it. That's, I guess it's a sort of flattery. But I think that's why people are scared of making friends. They're scared of, of working as a team. Because they don't want to get hurt. They don't want to be vulnerable. But... The fact of thing, without risks, and I and, and I still risk everything. It's not like I don't, you know. It's not like I'm a hundred percent set on this. I'm still reminding myself to be more better on at this. You gotta take risks. Um, you know, you almost have to have polarizing messages. You have to be almost extreme. Like everybody can't like you. So get. So I'd rather have people that really, really like me. And then a bunch of people that hate me. Then a, a bunch of people that think I'm, I'm cool, but I don't say anyone. And that's kind of what you do with, with, as a content creator. You find that formula where your content's so polarizing that you have rabid fans. But then you also have people that really, really hate. That's, and that's the thing. Now I know we're, we're on the right track because we're getting more and more trolls and, and, and hater raid coming our way. Dude! Beard and hat. We must podcast. You heard it, guys, right here. Hold me accountable. You know what? I'm going to write it right here. I've been telling you, bro. I want to collaborate with you, man. I'm writing on my my podcast so we follow up because I got so much to do on my to-do list. Yeah, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. But, yes. Yes. I, I, I... I get, I, you know, even online, I, t- I tend to get a good feel for people. And there's people that I know are, are most people that, that we've connected with want to help out. But then there's people that I meet and I'm like, this person has the heart and spirit, the soul that I'm looking for, that, that hunger, that passion. Because let's, say, let's face it, American culture, we've lost a lot of that hunger. We've lost a lot of that passion, that energy. And when we could get together with other people that feel that, that have that kind of energy, it's amazing. Then the things that happen. The problem is getting those people, finding them, and, and keeping them around, and then keeping the negative Nellies as far away as possible. That scared me. <laughs> Sorry, Panda. <laughs> Dude, I know. We're, Beard and Hat is in the same situation I'm in. You know, he's got the wife, the wife and kids situation, and, and the life schedule is real. So if, if we could, that could be a part of our collaborative story. We share the, those common things. We have common goals. We're in a common place in our life, pretty much. We're in a similar place in our life. That's, that's perfect, because I understand where you're coming from. Dude, yeah. 
Dude, trust me. That it, and the thing is, I, I'm a very passionate person, but there's so many things and people that just knock the wind out of you. So that's why we need to team up with people that have that passion. Because Peter had to say the same thing, you know, he lost his passion when he graduated college. And he's kind of rekindling the fire that he lost, dude. Yeah, and it's just it, it's just keeping those steps going. There's so many days that I'm like, man, I, I, I get up and I'm like, let me just go back to bed. But I, I just sit there, I lay down, I, I pray. You know, if you don't believe in prayer, that's fine. I meditate. And I just think about the good things. I'm like, man, we've, you know, I think about all the, the, the victories. I think about the things that are coming, that are on the horizon, things that are in the works, things that are in the pipelines. I'm like, man, you focus on all that good, and this is the, the, the bad stuff is always going to be. There's always going to be bills. There's always going to be haters. There's always going to be trolls. There's always going to be salty dogs. There's always going to be things you're going to improve on. You're never going to be 100% set. But I tell you what, you start being more social, so thinking more about other people. If you think more about how you can create, help other people succeed, that create mutually beneficial, beneficial scenarios, then it, it starts coming back to your life. And I, and I see that all the time. What the hell just happened? Something fell down. The cat's being silly. Blue. What are you doing, Blue? What happened? What happened, baby? Are you okay? She freaking, she fell off something while she was sleeping. That was weird. Uh, <laughs> she just looked at me with these sad eyes like, I fell and I woke up. Man, this has been an hour-long vlog. I guess this is, does this count as a vlog still? Uh, I, I hope so. But like I said, I'm, I'm just speaking from the heart. I've been thinking about these things all week, all month, really. Last month, too. Uh, I mean, uh, and, 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 and a lot, really, particularly today, just all these things, because... You know, when, when you do things, it's like, well, you can separate yourself from it and say, well, I'm doing this thing. I got this project here, that project there. I love what I'm doing, but if I was on the other side, what would be exciting about it to me? And what do I want to focus on? You know, this is why helping other people succeed helps you, too, because if you find the little recipes, the, te the techniques, the attitude, the mindset that helps you succeed, and you, and you make it so, so that you help others do that stuff, then you can replicate it. If you just focus on your own success, it's almost like you just have dumb luck, and that's the only, only way you really figure things out. So without collaborating, you don't have that baseline to say, oh, so this works consistently, this is hit or miss. Um, so many things. But anyway, guys. I, you know, I, I've probably talked your ear off. I think right now, um, Obi and the gang from the Sunday Dose are doing a game night. Yep, it's still in there, apparently. So I'm going to pop in there a little bit. And we'll probably do some uh, community gaming tonight. Uh, maybe some speedrunners, some smite, whatever. Um, being in hand, I know you're on a Mac, but I, I think there's some games we can play together. Maybe, maybe League of Legends. I don't know, just for, for, for some, for some trolley fun. Uh, we'll figure it out, but I'm going to take a little break. Um, I, you know, the, 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 people are getting the feel, so I'm glad. I'm glad that people are getting, like, what I'm talking about. I know I, know I ramble on, but it's just like my, like, my, the way my mind works, like 101 things are in my head, and I'm like, ugh, I know what I want to say, but now the words are failing me. And this is why I'm better with the written word. But... Again, that's my call to action is stop worrying about what the things that could go wrong. Give a little, trust people a little bit. You know, if it, if it messes up, don't, don't act like it, it, people are bad. All people are bad or that doing certain things with other people and, and working together. The team, don't think teamwork is bad as a whole it's because one person didn't work out or some teams didn't work out. There's going to be something there, you know, there's going to be something there. There's going to be the right people, the right, the right opportunity. Yeah, I love that. The, the, the interaction and I, and it's, it's amazing. Content has become more and more as a whole online content has become more and more of a one-sided experience. We want to bring it back to the interactive thing. Twitch is really like. It started to come back to that, but it's still so many people that where it's like, it's all about me and watch me play this game and listen to me rant on. And I, I don't really care what's going on in the chat. I don't really care about what, what, how your day was. <laughs> uh, all right, brother. 
I feel you there. Yep. Yeah, you'd be surprised. There's people that feel like the chat is just a uh, a bonus, but they don't really build around it. So, people are weird. People are weird. Oh, let me, I think I made a command for this so you can see our team speak. So if you want to hang out in here, that should work. Yeah, I did do that. I was planning ahead. By the way, guys. Uh, oh, is my audio still on? I think I hope I, hope I fixed it. I think I did fix it. I saw, I noticed something that may have been causing it this time around. But if it is, if it's still on a sync, well, Kung Fu Yogi. By the way, wow. Stay tuned. I'm going to be sharing more of these op ed pieces. Uh, you know, speak from the heart. But I'm going to make it more actionable. So stay tuned. There's going to be a lot of stuff like this coming to Geeky Answer. So if you like these kind of topics, if you need to pick me up, you know. That stuff is coming. I also want to get these kind of conversations going in the forums. And the forums, you know, especially our pi private forums, we have a podcasting group. We have a, a Twitch stream team group. If you want to get a part of that, register on geekyants.net. Uh, and then we can have those private conversations. If, you know, if you're still not comfortable being 100% out there, and, you know, there's some things you don't want to air out. I get it. I'm just, you know, everybody needs to have some kind of myst mystique, right? Some kind, something to keep to themselves or, or for special relationships, special people. Um, but, you know, we can have those real tough situations. Um, Ah, oh, I got you, brother. Hey, audio synced. Yay. Anywho. Uh, it's been a really good chat. I appreciate it. I, I'm glad I get this off my chest, and I'm glad I didn't think people would really get what I'm trying to say. So the fact that you guys are picking up on what I'm saying, that just, that, that, that just goes to show how cool you guys are. And, and I think that also goes to show that we're attracting the right kind of people. You know, and that's awesome. With this nucleus, you know, I'm really excited that things are going to come. And another thing, too, with that, you know, I'm going to say, don't think so much about how many friends you have or how many viewers or fans or followers you have. Think about how engaged they are and how much they actually really care about you. You might have very few of any of those things, but you, if they're highly engaged, you might be better off than someone that has numbers in the thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or millions. So celebrate those small victories. And remember, social media should be social. It should be about not just you and your interests, but it should be about other people. Share other people's content. Connect with people. You know, once in a while, just ask a question. Hey, how's everybody doing? You know, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite comfort food? You know, or send someone a message. You know, hey, I just saw you, you, you did this thing. Um, what's going on with you? Or oh, what are you up to these days? Or tell me more about this. You know, the more you show people that you care, the more they're going to show you that they care. You know, because people are scared. They're scared to be vulnerable. So you got to give them something. You got to put something on the line first. So that's the social part of social media. That's, uh, hopefully we can bring that back. And hopefully we can do our own little part to get rid of some of the self-destructive behavior in, in content marketing in, amongst content creators, particularly in Twitch. Because the fact that I got a nasty gram from someone on Twitter for being friendly and supporting them in, to build their channel and their audience, they're telling me that's a no-no. I mean, I, I'm almost tempted. I'll probably read it during the stream. I'm not going to read it during the vlog, but if I read you, read you this, twi this Twitter message, you'd just be like, someone actually said that? Yeah. But anyway, guys, uh, I should be back in a little bit. I should be streaming. But for now, I'm going to take a break. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget, Mega Awesome Giveaway. Details are down there. Bit.ly forward slash or bit.ly forward slash Mega Awesome Giveaway or just geekyheads.net forward slash giveaways. Register, earn achievements, connect with people, and be on the ground level as we grow and, and do great things together and, and give each other that, that much needed encouragement because not enough positive things in the world. But for that, with that, I'm out of here. Peace!